queerness is something that has often crossed paths with the alternative music scene, and yet finding openly LGBTQIA plus musicians from within its many associated genres is difficult. It's certainly not the case that alternative music isn't welcoming of LGBTQIA plus people, indeed it's been a liberating musical force for decades now, but finding queer artists and queer voices within these associated genres is not straightforward. The list of musicians in the more famous alternative bands who have come out is small to say the least. All of which makes Suede, a five-piece band from Camden in North London, all the more exceptional. Because from one of the most stereotypically laddie sides of the alternative music spectrum came one of the most authentic and powerful voices of bisexuality. How's it going guys, my name is Munro and in today's video we're talking about Suede. In case you didn't grow up in the UK at some point in the last 30 years, Britpop is one of the most iconic alternative music genres in UK music history. Taking heavy inspiration from the indie bands of the preceding decades, the genre brought the sound of alternative rock to a mainstream popular audience, with many of its associated records selling millions of copies. Key to distinguishing it from other genres are its constant placing and referring to of British culture and Britain itself whether that be Pulp talking about generic street names or Blur talking about the Dustman coming on Wednesdays. Speaking of which, bands like Blur and their would-be nemesis Oasis so often crop up in conversations about the genre because they were its most successful acts. But you simply cannot ignore how many other artists were a part of it as well. Much of it was seen to have a lot of connections to lad culture, primarily due to other entertainment that engaged with its fans, such as lad magazines and football. In reality, however, the genre had a very broad range of artists and sounds but it's hard to find a queer voice within Britpop's sound. Sure, Jarvis Cocker did once sing Jesus It Must Be Great To Be Straight, but straight in that context is often seen more as straight and boring, rather than a comment on sexuality. Suede, however, were, and still are, a voice for queerness. Inspired by the indie sounds of the 1980s, the band started to form towards the end of the decade around University College London and around Camden. After struggling to find a drummer for some time and switching out guitarists on a few occasions, the band eventually settled on Brett Anderson as their lead singer, Bernard Butler on guitar, Matt Osman on bass, and Simon Gilbert on drums. Butler would leave the band after 1994 following a tumultuous period of disagreements for a multitude of reasons, reasons that meant that their stunning second album, Dogman Star, almost never made it to release. A year later, they had a new guitarist, Richard Oakes, who has continued with them until today. The band's discography is exquisite and extensive in its own right, and even some 30 years after forming, they're still putting out new material. It's their first three albums, however, that really embody everything that I love about them, these being their self-titled debut, Dogman Star, and Coming Up. During this period, they conveyed everything about their other Britpop contemporaries, the indie-inspired sound, the placing within British culture, and the mainstream association with other Britpop bands. But in contrast to the blokey appeal of Oasis or the ultra-cool vibes of Elastica, here was a band that was talking about the age of consent for homosexual sex, desiring to break gender conventions, getting off with a guy, and so many more coded references as well. Where Blur and Pulp opted for more ironic artwork on their album covers, Suede's were covered with androgynous erotica, often set in dreary and dystopian worlds, a theme that has since defined their image. Queerness is so intrinsically entwined within Suede's sound and story that the importance of it for a wider representation cannot be underestimated. And the most lasting impact for me was the way that they expressed bisexuality. Drop the cure off though. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, oh, I thought you were taking the piss. Yeah, you were nervous. <laughs> I'm home. I'm home. That's my job. No one tells you how to be bisexual, but Suede can most certainly help with that. 
The way that they presented themselves was a very important part of my own coming out, as I saw something in them that I could be inspired by and validated by. The focal point of this was their lead singer, Brett Anderson, whose androgynous image brought the freedom that classic rock had given to cross-gendered expression a few decades prior to the alternative music world of the 1990s. The way that he presented himself resonated strongly with how queer people presented themselves back then, and most certainly continues to now. It forged a space for queerness and fluidity of gender and sexuality within Britpop, which intrinsically gave room for people of all sexualities to find commonality. For me, it helped me find my own bisexuality. Because here's the thing, so much of the band's image stands in stark contrast to the more campier, typical side of LGBTQIA plus pride, as opposed to the more jovial stereotypes of bisexuality that make light of the confusion, our lack of ability to make decisions, and of course, cuffed jeans. Swade's music gives light to, well, what goes on below the surface. There is a constant darkness that surrounds Suede. Their lyrics can often utilise degraded imagery, their production is often drenched in murkiness, and there's an air of dystopia that they convey constantly. The anchor point to British culture ensure it remains connected to the real world, but it's almost as if the band peel away the surface to reveal what the world really looks like through their music. It drapes much of their aesthetic in noir, helped further by the occasional reference to nuclear wastelands and post-industrial settings. The guitars often have a metallic metallic, industrial taste to them, and their use of reverb gives everything this harrowed, lost soul quality to it. I've always felt that the band have been able to convey a dramatisation of how I see the world, which is not to say that everything is hopeless, but that there is an ever-present darkness. I intrinsically go about society with a worry that I will encounter someone who is less accepting of bisexuality than the people around me usually are, and, you know, I constantly worry about needing to adjust my flamboyance or how I present myself for fear of engaging with someone who, you know, doesn't approve of it in the same way that I do. I'm lucky enough to live in an incredibly open and accepting city, but I've also spent so much of my life in places that are the complete opposite of where I am now. For so much of my life I wasn't even sure if I was bisexual or straight or anything, and I was trying to work that out in a place that did a lot to deny people a healthy environment to discover themselves in. I joke now when I look back at some of the things I was thinking and doing when I was a teenager. I mean, I've been a diehard fan of Lady Gaga since about 2010. I always had as much interest for the scenes in TV shows and films with male nudity as I had for the ones with female nudity. You know, the typical things. But behind all that, I also carry the weight of being a teenager at a secondary school where the environment was so toxic towards anyone who wasn't heterosexual. Don't get me wrong, that environment has negative consequences for everyone, but for bisexuals, there really isn't a discourse about how much of an impact it has. It took me until I went to university to properly let go of it and actually find myself, and that's why I only came out properly just shy of two years ago. As a result of this, I am drawn to any creator, personality or individual who is also bisexual, and I have a constant need to try and find a connection with people like myself. So we were the first of those who I found, and just to be told through their music that you could be bisexual was so validating for me. Perhaps then, when that is your entire experience of queerness or of being a queer person, there's a need to envision the world anew. It's an experience where you can feel like an outsider on a fundamental level. One where the connections with your family and those that you're supposed to be close with can be so easily broken simply for being who you are. One where relationships where you can truly be yourself don't come along that easily or take a hell of a lot of work to create, such that they can end up feeling just as effusive as the imagery within Swade's lyrics. One where the attitude of society and the ideology behind our governance doesn't make room for people like yourself. One where you have so few role models to look up to or to be inspired by or to give you any kind of direction when you're growing up. One we're just saying that you're bisexual on the internet is enough to make people think that they have the right to sexualize you with no prior consent, or on the other end of the scale, bring out all manner of biphobia. Ouch. Mom. Wait. I'm bi. Alright? Yeah. You fucked a girl? No, I've just always been bi. You can't say you're bi if you haven't fucked a girl. Yes, you can. No, 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 you can't. You can say, no, I'm bi. But if you haven't been in the trenches, you can't. <laughs> And as for the time period that Brett Anderson was writing so much of this music in, well, you don't need me to tell you that the 80s and 90s were far less accepting times than today. And what Suede offer in their envisioning of the world is a place to feel safe and accepted for struggling with all of this. 
they make a home for the darker, more difficult sides of being bisexual. It's not to say that Suede's music exists entirely for this reason, but having grown up with them as I've come to terms with my own sexuality, their music has become that place for me. Nothing is straightforward about being bisexual. The world as it stands today struggles with its mere concept, and there are so many learned behaviours and conventions that undermine its existence. But Suede don't treat that as a reason to be defeatist, or to go for the perhaps more typical route of having no hope of overcoming it. Instead, their music captures the darkness in meticulous detail, and truly gives colour to the world, as they paint their vision with often lush, hazy and metallic instrumentation, elaborate and anecdotal lyrics, packaged under their dystopian imagery. This isn't about trying to be the definition of the bisexual experience, but rather a version of it, one that people can seek their own comfort within. It feels odd to say what it means to be bisexual in the same way it feels weird to say what it means about any sexuality. All sexualities, gender identities and everything in between are entirely valid parts of human existence, so what it means to be any of them, really, is to have complete charge over who you are. But the individual cultures and unique experiences that are attached to each of those identities is something that Suede's music really helped to fill in a gap for me. You don't get told how to be bisexual, or how to manage your feelings as a bisexual, or what the world looks like as a bisexual. Other medias are essential to work that out. There is so much of a struggle with coming out and being queer when it comes to making peace with the world and making peace with yourself. And to say that Suede's music has been a key part of that for me would be an understatement. They have totally defined how I see much of the world, how I want to present myself, and perhaps more important than that, how I can present myself. When I see pictures of the band, especially back in their 90s heyday, the dark-shaded androgyny is just such a validation and inspiration for how I feel and sometimes see myself. Make no mistake, I am all for the campier side of LGBTQIA plus pride, but it doesn't mean that that's exactly how everyone wants to present themselves as. Bands like Suede showed me how to be bisexual without the rainbows and the bright colours while still staying true to myself. When representations of bisexuality are so unbelievably lacking in the world, it's things like this that I find myself clinging to and turning to for all manner of support and guidance. I debated a lot about how much detail I wanted to go into about my personal life when I was making this video. I am very lucky to have a lot of confidence in my ability to talk about my sexuality and being very open about my own experience, but it's not a confidence that is shared by everyone in the bisexual community at all. Indeed, you see so few bisexual people, especially bisexual men, being open on the big social media platforms, and that's because we all face this world with so much uncertainty. There isn't enough intrinsic awareness within wider society for how so many of its conventions, attitudes and behaviours compound on our experience, and when we do try to speak up about this or simply express ourselves, it is so common for people to bat it back down with nasty comments or shitty tweet replies. Sure, we could just ignore this and move on, but I think it's fair to say that we all know it's a reflection of wider attitudes rather than just trolling or teasing. How we overcome this, I don't know, uh, and I hope that my own confidence can at least be a voice for others or encourage others to try breaking past the negative reactions. And it's when reflecting on stuff like this, the, the negative side of being bisexual, that Suede's music really quite simply means everything today. Their music is not a campaign slogan or any kind of happy, clappy, smile through the pain bullshit. It is brutally, astonishingly honest, and as drenched in murkiness as it is, it is also so full of hope and promise. So in tune are their lyrics and their instrumentation that when they're really dolloping out on the more romantic side of things, they offer one of the most engrossing worlds to fall into within all of alternative music. One that truly mixes the bucolic with the downtrodden. Their music for me is an affirmation of my sexuality, an aspiration of how I can present myself, and perhaps most importantly, a validation of the inherent intrepidness that comes with being a bisexual person. The world as it stands is not ready to accept bisexual 
sexuality, and that has a lot of impact on the ones who have to deal with the consequences. And it's that that makes the dystopian reimagining of the world found within Suede's affirming, hope-giving music so important to me. Dying, I'm 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 dying,